Okay, now the boy is. You good? Yep. This will be. Yep. We're all, set. We're all set? Okay, perfect. Um, good evening, and welcome to the March 25th, 2024 meeting of the Litchfield Board of Selectmen. Sorry for the late delay uh, getting started, um, but we've just come out of paperwork session, and um, we'd like everybody to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, so we have a um, new member of the board here, John Brunel, is back after an absence. I'd like to welcome him back. Thank you. And um, I will say that there were some questions about whether or not he should serve or not or could serve or not, and he's been fully vetted. So we'd like to welcome you completely to this board. Thank look you. Look forward to working with you. I'm okay? looking forward to it, too. Good. So and thank you for everybody who came out and voted. Get that right out of the way. It was a great election, by the way. The most I ever remember for a non-state or non-federal election in this oh, town. Yeah. I mean, Great turnout. Unbelievable. 2,600 and... All you had to do is put a school on it. <laughs> so, um, up first, we're going to go uh, with the nominations for the, uh, the chair and vice chair of the, the Board of Selectmen. So we'll open it up for nominations for chair first. I recommend Bob. We have we have a nomination. I'll nominate Steve Gannon. We have a nomination <laughs> for Steve Gannon, so we're going to write this down. Anybody else? Kim, you had mentioned possibly wanting to be chair. Yeah. I'll okay. Try, I will make a recommendation that okay. I would like well, to run for chairman. Okay. So I will nominate you so that you'll be on the ballot. Thank you. Hmm. Interesting. Good right? one. So, all right. Anybody else? All right. Um, we'll start with. We'll start with me since I'm first. All those in favor of me returning to the chair, raise your hand. <laughs> oh, should I abstain? I'll abstain. Make that two. I'll abstain on myself. All those in favor of Steve Gannon? And all those in favor of Kim Queenan? She votes for herself. Can I do that? Oh, abstain. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I guess that's I'll none. Give, I'll, give, I'll give you a vote. You'll give me one? You already so voted. You, you no, I, did. I abstain on myself. Oh, okay, gotcha. He did. He did, too. Thank you. <laughs> Where are we at? You kept score. I did. Two. You got? Bob Leary, two. Steve Gannon, one. Kim Queen, and one. Everybody okay with that? Thank you. Do it again. Uh, nominations for the position of vice chair. Um, and I, I will nominate Kim Queen. I'll nominate Steve Gannon. Me too. Me too what? What? Nominate Kim. <laughs> you, well, you can't no nominate. Him. You can vote. Okay, I'll vote. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right. I'm not keeping up with the writing. Yeah, it's that's too much right. moving I, too I fast. Got you, I got you. Here. <laughs> I, got, I got you covered here. All right. All those in favor of Kim Queen, and raise your hand. All those in favor of Steve Gannon, raise your hand. And I'm just going to abstain. Yeah. <laughs> What's the thing to do? Kim Queen and two. Steve Gannon one. Okay. So it stays the same. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> Up next, we have uh, assignments, budget committee. Anyone that doesn't want it, I'll take it again. Yeah. Do you mind if I pass these out? Oh, sure. What do you got? Uh, these are the existing meetings that people go to, oh. and who's uh, you know how many meetings you attend. One for everybody. Or? There's one, and I think I have extras over there. Okay. Uh, I need one. I don't know who has my original copy. Do you need two over there? Oh, can we, can we share Because in case there's a conflict, you might be able to see it. So, um, so let me explain what you're looking at, if you don't mind. <laughs> All right. It's the only reading is ye the, the yellow check marks are there is when we look at the bylaws later today. I just made sure okay. that they were on the list. Okay. And the bottom one about zoning, um, nobody attends today, but I just stuck it on this list in case people wanted to see it. 
So these are the, the current meetings that we have going down, Board of Selectmen, Planning Board, Budget, Facilities, uh, Emergency Management, SIP, Recreation, Conservation, Heritage, Energy Commission, Economic Development, NRPC. Okay. Zoning, we currently don't have one, but again, it was, I just put it there because it was on yep. the bylaws. Yep. So you can see how many meetings are required next. Rec recreations twice a month. Is it? So you're 20, yep. that's 24. Okay. If people want to update that. Is conservation still once or twice? Yeah. I only see it on once. the cal the calendars here. Where's recreation on here? It's on, it's uh, second and fourth Tuesdays. Uh, no, no. On the, on the, I printed the calendar on page two. It's always a Tuesday after the Board of Selection. Okay. Is it once or twice? Twice. twice. Okay, so they're 24. Okay. Yeah. In the summer, they may drop down to once a month, but I think the last couple of years we've been staying with two. Board, board, Thank rec. You for that. Yep. board, rec, board, rec. Okay. Okay. So the reason I'm printing this, just so everyone is aware, is all the committees I've on, I, I attend 112, 100 meetings a year. <coughs> I'm not going to do that again this year, so I want to be on committees. But I don't blame you. it's going this way <laughs> because I'm no good showing up crispy yeah. to these meetings. <laughs> All right, so I'm just getting that out. I think you've over overindulged Thank the last you. few years. Yep. Thank you for that. So um, yeah, I'll take budget. I guess if any nope, anybody else want it, nope. Okay. That's always the that's always the reaction. I'll back you up, Bob. All right, if I can't make it up, yeah. good. I'm going to put you down. Um, planning board? I'll take that one this year. Kevin? Okay. Do we have a backup for Kevin? You don't want one. No? No. We're not there. You can't vote. You can't do anything. You're just there to hear. Okay. It's just not a voting member? No, you're not a voting member. You shouldn't be. Yeah, you're you shouldn't be and by law. It's my opinion, but that's me. Okay. Okay. So oh, it's always been voting when I was there, and my predecessor did that. Yep. Yeah. Well, we have bylaws, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll print those out. It too. depends okay. what the planning board by bylaws say. Yeah, I'll have to look. Yeah. Okay. So if you can't make a meeting, just let us know. We'll I'll let you. We'll find somebody to cover it for yep. you. Okay. Um, recreation. I've been asked by rec that. members to join back into the rec, so I'd like to do rec. Okay. No problem with that. All right. Do we have a backup for him? Ah, you don't need one. Same thing. Okay. You'll. I uh, just again. Just let us know. Yep. Yep. So we have somebody present. Uh, conservation. I don't want that. You can have it. No, you're done. I'm you done. already did yours. <laughs> I, I you get it. It. You want the conservation? Okay. I have a conflict of interest with the conservation because okay. it's on a Wednesday when NRPC. Okay. It's a, it's a so that puts you on heritage. You well, do. there's plenty more here too. But well, yeah. these are the main. The now, do I main. have a conflict? I just want to. Uh, I am a member of the historical society. Nope. Is that a conflict? Nope. nope. Half the. Well, most of the board. Board. Yeah. Two separate yeah. entities. Where is it on the list? Hold on. All the so other members on the Heritage, Heritage <laughs> Commission are on Heritage. also on historical. Yeah. All right. yeah, it's it's um it's two separate entities. It's light lifting once a month, yeah. a couple hours, maybe an hour. Mm -hmm. So we're the same four people. I helped start that though, so it would be nice to do that to some fruition. Let's see what else we got here. We have Capital Improvement Committee. I actually like that. Yeah. Unless somebody else you wants want to stay them. On that? I think I can see across the board more of okay. the budgeting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> emergency management. What is that? I can do it because I can. I make my time available in the morning. So. I, I can't be around in the morning. So I can probably make it work. I got two grandchildren to show up at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> school facilities improvement committee. I actually had a couple of school board members ask me if I would do that. Well, I don't know when they meet, but if they can work on their schedule. Their schedule is three thirty in the afternoon, where I have a con conflict. It, that just started this whole thing, so I couldn't be there <coughs> for them. Okay. Well, we'll see if we can't get them to push it back to four or four. Okay. And then we have ad hoc committees for the Board of Selectmen, Economic Development and Energy. I'll sit on economic. You want to do economic? Unless you have something you um, passionate about. Um, I like it because I helped start it. Okay. okay. Are you okay with energy? Oh, yeah, I don't. Let me just, do I have a conflict now? When do these meet? Yeah. Only because we started it, we finally started getting the surveys back and... Taking that on. And it does kind of line. align with NRPC. Energy and heritage are at the same time. 
Which one? Energy and heritage. Energy and heritage. Okay, so I will do. Well, I have to be careful because NRPC is sucking up a lot of time here too, right? Mm -hmm. Let me think about that. I could stay on heritage. Let me just but see. You pick your choice. Let me just see. So, um, what is, well, which no, one is it? Rec. Economic you can't development. Do and rec. <laughs> it's really NRPC, right? Okay. Four full commissioner meetings and twelve executive committee. That's. And what, when do they fall? They are Wednesday nights. We only do this once a year, folks. <laughs> again, Stick I don't want us. to start all of a sudden up to 40, 60 meetings again, right? When and we're realizing we have too many commissions and too many meetings. When is that our PC meetings, Kim? Uh, The full quarterly is, is it Wednesday? Wednesday, once a quarter. Okay. And the executive. And the reason I'm on the executive is we are the executive committee. Let That's me just backtrack. So NRPC is made up of our town and the 12 surrounding towns, 13 towns. Mm -hmm. We have about 40 commissioners for all the towns. Mm -hmm. We have an executive committee that sits on that. I'm on that. Mm -hmm. And the reason I do that is because we're Jay Mankara's boss. Mm -hmm. And when we want to look at grants, you know what I mean? There's things that we can do for direction. Okay. So that's why. I think that's the that. important one for you to stay on. So if I do four and 12 there, I'm up to 13 meetings there, right? Mm -hmm. um, wait a minute. No, you have four. I have 12. 16 meetings just for NRPC. I have, so, I have a KKK. -K 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 <laughs> so it's like I think something has to go either probably SIP or Heritage Commission. So uh, Heritage, I wish. I'll, I'll take Heritage. I'll take Heritage. Okay. That. Well, that means you'll be on two boards. Are you okay with that? Yeah. And then okay. I'm done. I'm, I have SIP, Economic Development, NRPC. Yeah. Okay. You got it? Energy. Energy. Um, oh, she said she took. She, you oh, take? I have SIP, economic development, and NRPC. So Heritage, I think, moved to Thursday night, right? Did they? Yeah. Energy is once a month. Uh, energy is the here. same night as Heritage now. Yeah, Heritage is Thursday. <coughs> okay, yeah, well, good. Can you all. No, I'm, I'm good. So I'll do Rec and Heritage, and they're on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so that's good. I can do that. It's fine. If it won't. I can do it. If no one else wants it. <coughs> sure. Yep. All right. So I'll put you on the and Steve's on economic. And I'm on economic? Okay. When's that? No. Kim's, no. Kim's on economic? Yeah. Let me just make sure I don't have a conflict. I'm going to reread. I'm, I'm going to read these back. <laughs> I'm looking at the next page on Viva Conflict. With SIP. SIP is on. Well, we don't know. When does that usually meet? Like the first. It's got to start up again, right? Um, Monday, Monday, typically, right? Are they Monday nights? Is yes. it every other Monday? First Monday night. Of summer. Okay, so that's a Monday. Economic development on the back page here is on a Wednesday. And NRPCs are other Wednesdays, so my Wednesdays are looking good. Right. Okay. Looks, Looks like Wednesdays, day day. Wednesdays <laughs> are school facilities. Yes. Is it every Wednesday? So how many of them do I have now? It's twice a month. Sometimes yes. it is. Yeah, it's been canceled. It was canceled I only again have 40 for meetings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe night? I'll get kicked off the executive committee. <laughs> All right, so what I have here is I have budget committee with myself and John backing me up and then planning with Kevin. Reckless Steve, um, conservation with John, heritage with Steve, CIP with Kim, emergency management John, school facilities with me, economic development with Kim, and energy with John. Does that sound right to everybody? Yep. Yep. Okay. What about that zoning one that's on? We don't have a rep to zone. We don't need a rep. Oh, on okay. Zoning. I just was on one of the no, agenda items tonight. Okay. All right. All my years of doing this, there's no, no, never was a selectman as part of that group because it's the illegal side of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Whether the selectman like what's going on, they cannot be part of the vote. Great. Right. Right. Thank you. Are we good there? All right. Thank you, everybody. Moving right along. <laughs> Review and consent. Uh, approval of consent items. We have an AP manifest for March 19, 2024, in the amount of $46,471.35. One for March 26, 2024, in the amount of $85,496.28. Payroll manifest for March 21, 2024, in the amount of $70,132.44. 
and one for March 28, 2024, in the amount of $60,503.78. We have four elderly exemption approvals, one new and three recertifications, two elderly exemption denials, uh, gravel tax levy map 21 and lot 18 for $2,002.36. February treasurer's reconciliation, Intent to cut map 20, lot 18-1. Intent to cut map 20, lot 18-2. Intent to cut map 20, lot 18-3. Intent to cut map 20, lot 16. Intent to cut map 20, lot 14. Intent to excavate map 21, lot 18. Two new all veteran approvals per RSA 72 semicolon 28-B. Anybody have any questions or comments or anything about these? I have one uh, question about the elderly uh, denials. Do we have those in the folder? Do we have the folder in here? We don't have the folder. Okay. Oh, we'll get it. We'll get it. That's fine. Just get it. Um, we'll get it later. So let's hold up. Let's hold on that until we can review those. Okay. I always want to see why someone's denied. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the consent items and which one was the LD ex elderly exemption denial to be tabled. Okay. Do we have a motion for Mr. Gannon? Second. Second by Ms. Queen. And any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 500. Very good. All right. Uh, requests for additional items or other business? Hearing none, public input will occur no earlier than 6.45 p.m. And since it is 7.11 p.m., we will open the floor to public input. Are there any members of the public that would like to come forward and talk to us? That's a lot. <laughs> Thank you. No members of the public? Okay. Hearing none, we will close public input also at 7.11. For your scorekeeping, Kim, we opened and closed at 7.11. Okay. No members. Um, okay. Up next, business approval of minutes for March 11th, 2024. Has everybody had a chance to look at them? Mm -hmm. Is everybody good with them? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We will entertain a motion to accept. Make a motion to approve the minutes for March 11th, 2024. Motion from Mr. Gannon. I'll second. Second from Ms. Queen. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Motion carries 401. <coughs> okay. Up next, we have special events and parade policy second draft reintroduced. Ms. Kleiner, where are we at? So, oh, good evening. I um, believe that um, the selectmen had asked us to meet with some members of the community and um, address their concerns. Um, with the policy that was first introduced. Mm -hmm. um, so on the version in front of you, you'll find changes to the policy that were a result of three meetings, um, and those changes are in red. Okay. Then you will find changes in blue that were made um, as a result of a member of the community coming forth and the staff and I um, looking at a different issue. And so I'll, I'll explain that one first. Um, in the past, mm -hmm. there was a application mm -hmm. that was entitled Application for Public Demonstration Permit. Mm -hmm. And that has kind of been the application that we have used for everything yep. although if you look on the back of that application it is specifically for marches pickets public demonstrations of that sort and it and it lists very intently all the differences and that has a three-day yep. um, period okay. that makes sense because if you are going to protest something, 
that generally happens quickly, right? Um, so an event comes up and you realize you're going to protest. And that also c falls under freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. um, so we thank people for letting us know that they're going to do this. And we mm -hmm. work with the police and fire to make sure that people are safe and that it's done in accordance with the safety regulations of the town. But that we suggest that that type of demonstration stays on that original permit application. So we went and we took that out of the special events and parade policy, which is now calling for 45 days. It's the new special events permit, um, I think after much discussion, it was pretty clear as to why we were requiring the 45 days. Um, there wasn't any ask for that to be changed um, after we, we met with residents. Um, you have to remember there's only two Board of Selectmen meetings. Um, so quite often we don't have time to send it through the internal process mm -hmm. and get it to the Board of Selectmen um, within 30 days or especially not within 15 days or anything less. Um, and quite often we'll meet with internally with the applicant. There might be some discussion. They may come back with some more information. Um, so trying to get all the information settled and get the sign-offs of the department heads, um, we need that 45 days. Other than that, the major there were some major changes as far as um, the throwing out of candy um, that was added back into uh, the policy, but requires a safety officer. Um, the requirements for food was made clear. And that is now specified out in the policy. The adequate sanitary facilities, this is for special events, um, now has an Appendix A, which is what Recreation Commission is following and, and what uh, Fire and Building has put out. Um, there really is not a whole lot of changes. Um, other than really defining what is an open and a closed route, right? Because that determines what type of safety requirements you need. If it is a fully clo closed route, then you can allow different types of vehicles to be within the parade. Closed meaning there's no access for incoming traffic to disturb the route. Mm -hmm. So there's hard barriers, there's trucks, there's something. Um, so by really defining that, we were able to, I think, put more clarity on what the requirements would be and what type of vehicles would be allowed. Um, we did kind of make sure that we were following the state RSA um, and some, but uh, most, but not all of uh, Primex's recommendations. So a couple of things, uh, questions real quick. And I noticed that like the 45 days, um, that seems like a long time to me, but it also says that you can have an expedited one um, but not more than 72 hours prior to the event. Um, because I know when we did the 4th of July parade two years ago, I mean, that was brought up in like three days, right? Yep. We, we, that was organized and carried out in maybe not even three days. It was quick. Yeah, it was very quickly done. Um, no, uh, so if I may, mm -hmm. I, I think the request came to the board mm -hmm. and the board approved it. Mm -hmm. 
but the internal process followed after the board had already approved it. Mm -hmm. well, so it was a couple one. months. No, this was the first parade. That we oh. It was a couple of years ago during COVID. Mm -hmm. And we... we <clears throat> Actually, you could not have parades during COVID. That was a cruise. It was That's a cruise. right. It was called That's a cruise. Right. It was a cruise. Right. You can, parades yeah. were prohibited. Yeah, they were faux pas. Yeah. So we had a cruise. But it was done very, very quickly. So I'm, I'm glad that there is something in there. As long as we can coordinate it with the police and the fire and make sure everybody's safe. But I want to be cautious that, like, we we're going to have an ongoing, like, a yearly Fourth of July parade. The four, 45 days is not much. Yeah. It's three meetings with the Board of Selectmen, and we want to make sure that everything is covered. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the one that you're talking about is, like, the kids win a championship and they're coming home and they want to, you know, celebrate as they're going down the road. Oh, that could be exp that's, that's a cruise. <laughs> We could call it a cruise. That could be expedited. Yeah. But what I don't want is somebody saying, well, you know, I want this expedited because I didn't have 45 days to plan it. Yeah. Correct. Um, we didn't know they're going to win. You had other questions, Bob. I'll let you go. <laughs> I got a question afterwards, too. Yeah, the other one was just, I'm, I'm glad that, well, as far as the candy throwing goes, um, they can basically appoint anyone that's on the float to be a safety monitor, right? Yeah. If Absolutely. there's an adult there. Okay. Over 18. Does it say over 18? No, but an, an adult is over 18, right? Safety monitor. Nine of ten, there is an adult that's on the wagon or walk or wagon group. Yeah, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, absolutely. Question, please. Um, Kim, how are the, the, all the department heads that are involved in this, plus the citizens, how do the department heads feel about the policy as it is written today? Are they able to meet the requirements and do it safely and all that? Um, I think so. I want to be a little bit careful about speaking for all department heads. How many because, do we have here? Um, two here right I now. see we two. We have three. We have a chief. I think there, oh, there's, three. Yeah, there's definitely there. some department heads that did not agree um, with the throwing of candy. Um, so I think, you know, it was a resident that brought up at our meeting that there had been a, eight deaths across the country. Um, we had said you could walk along the parade route and the walkers could throw the candy to make sure that it got up on. I think there were some department heads that were felt easier with that. I can um, but at the end of the day, I, I think we were trying to reach a consensus that mm -hmm. um, was something that we could bring forward. I, I mean, I will say, I mean, Primex suggests, and you will find in many town policies, mm -hmm. no throwing of candy from the float. Yeah, because it makes kids come out to the road. Right. Right. And, and you can't, not always can you reach the sidewalk, right? And, um, but I think we are trying to work together. And mm -hmm. I think overall, you guys did a great job. My question's around um, closed, and it says something about um, a hard barrier. And you mentioned possibly, like, can it be a truck or a dump truck, or can the CERT team be qualified as closing the road? Or does it need to be have some kind of physical barrier? It has to have a physical barrier. So, like, if they park their vehicle car. at the end of the street? Correct. So a, a, police, a police cruiser, yeah. a car, a truck, a yeah. something. A fire truck. And then no one ever drives by. <clears throat> You're going to be busy, Chief. Well, <laughs> well the, the, one like of the parades. whole spin-ups of the CERT team or one of the helps is to take some of the burden off. Yeah. Um, Doug support. can't have all those guys on the road. So yeah. if if the CERT team, when they get qualified, can they block the road? And have, or have cones to or stuff like that for them. Directional yep. cones. Yeah. I mean, cones aren't a hard barrier. Yeah. Um, but if you park a car yeah, uh, across yeah. and someone physically cannot get through, yeah. um, and then you had the cert workers there. Then you put your cone up. Okay. Okay. They can knock the cones over. The Historical yeah. Society will be working on the 275th oh, parade. Yeah. That's right. right. <laughs> Special event, probably. Yep. So we'll make sure they get a copy of this once it's approved. I didn't see, they do bunting on their building. 
but mm -hmm. it's not a banner, you know, so. Yeah. That's, that's totally all right. Yep. I didn't so see that as a. We were very careful, attachment. and you'll see under section one, um, it does not cover recreation facil facilities because our recreation commission actually has a great policy and fantastic application process. Um, it doesn't cover Litchfield Veterans Park mm -hmm. because the veterans have actually asked for a different policy, which is going to have different requirements, more stringent than this. So, I mean, um, and then you'll see it was added or events at the Litchfield Community uh, Church or Litchfield Historical Society. Mm -hmm. And that was to cover the mm -hmm. strawberry festivals and things at the church mm -hmm. where they may be using just a piece of town land for parking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want them to have to file this application every time they were using just a piece of our land for our parking and things. And we certainly didn't want the historical society to have to fill out this policy every time they have an event at the Historical Society, yeah. which is technically town land, but at Historical Society event. It always, even where the church is, is town land. Mm -hmm. So we might have to have a, one of these for every Sunday meeting. No, so they, they said that um, they were going to work between the two of them yeah. to come up with some type of policy to internally cover themselves. So we felt comfortable excluding them. The church allowed them to build the town hall there years ago. But it is town land. Well, the church gave it to the town yeah. for tax purposes. Yes. So the, so, so the, the last time you had a big anniversary, you had 250th anniversary yep. of the town. Yep. But they were all over the, that area, school. right? The church, yeah. the school, everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Uh, Which beautiful. Page is that? Um, just, I'm going to make sure this policy holds up, but you can wave. I see you have Section waivers five. anyway. You have waivers? Okay. You have Where's waivers that? at yeah. the bottom. What, 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 what section? Because I don't know if this is going to be up and down 3A. I have no idea yet. Uh, at the bottom, there's the one you can do a waiver. At the very end? Yeah. Uh, section 8. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> when they did the 250, no, what, what we do is cut a path. Into the field to go to the school. The way yeah. many provisions uh, the I cut that okay. path for them so they can walk mm -hmm. by. So, so it does so. require a public hearing because mm -hmm. it's an ordinance. Yep. So um, our next meeting because we have to post it, right? We would have to post it. So to yes. accept this for our next meeting. Okay. Yeah. So I'm guessing there's some people here that are involved in parades. Do you guys have any public comment here? We'll do a special public comment. We are happy. You've got to come up to the table. Come on up to the table. Yep. One, two, three, Hillcrest. Yes. We are happy with the policy as it stands. Yep. And Thank you. It was, it was, I have to say, it was an outstanding process to mm -hmm. work with the town employees and yep. the department heads and to actually you know, come to a compromise and, and we'll move her through this. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Excellent. We appreciate Thank everything you. you guys did and helping. It's good coming together like that. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Good. So we'll have a public hearing at our next meeting. And we'll get this. We will schedule it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, computer, wake up. Oh, there you are. Okay. Up next, Litchfield Community Power Plan final and next steps. The Energy Committee had a meeting last Thursday evening where a member of Standard Power came forward to discuss the next steps. Um, and so many of these have already been done. Um, there was notification to the PUC that the plan had been approved at town meeting. Um, that is done. Um, we have notified the PUC and Eversource that Standard Power is the authorized agent, mm -hmm. um, and we've given them permission, written permission, to request utility data. Um, we're not looking. Um, we've put out a, a couple of uh, public service announcements just to let uh, the community be at ease. 
-hmm. we are not looking for an RFP for pricing until probably this fall. Um, so one of the reasons is the uh, very abnormally low Eversource rate at the moment. Um, and so the rep actually, Standard Power rep, actually spoke to that mm -hmm. um, to say that that rate isn't nor isn't that low in the market. Mm -hmm. It's artificially lowered by a one and a half cents that mm -hmm. the Eversource was giving back to the rate payers. Um, but um, we would probably go out for an RFP um, sometime July or August, not looking for a start until se late September, October. Um, that's when, once we have that rate, is when the board decides um, to sign the ESA or electric service agreement. After that, there's two mailings. One is, here's the program rate, and then the second one is kind of, here are your options to opt out and all of that. Um, and so I think if we can let people know that you will get more information and we'll be keeping up more information and the Energy Committee meets um, every month, and that those meetings, which are broadcast on CTV, um, this will be discussed much more, um, but we are in good shape. The last um, piece that has to be done now is the Board of Selectmen needs to make a motion to adopt the amended plan. And the amended plan, which is on your portal, um, I left the marked up and I'm left the clean. And you'll see most of the marks up are dates being added in. The date it was approved at town meeting, um, mm -hmm. the date that we notified the PUC. These are not substantial changes to the plan document itself. The program remains the same. Everything that was voted on at town meeting remains the same. It's just putting those important dates and pieces into the document, um, but it does need official approval. Now, I had asked you a little while ago about the, um, I <coughs> got some feedback from residents who say that they're automatically enrolled in this. And it was my understanding, based on all the discussions that we had as a board, that we would, you would have to opt into the program. No. So opt out. You are. It is a. Everyone's you can look at it automatically in. Everybody will be you, in unless you have a, a provider. Another provider. Yeah. So say you have a provider, you actually have three choices. You could stay with your provider, you could opt out of your provider and go with this new plan, or you could opt out and stay with EverSource. If you're currently on EverSource, you're going to be automatically opted in, and then you have 45 days. 30, 30, minimum of 30 days to opt out prior to the program commencing. So they'll get notified 45 days in advance. They'll get information on how to opt out, including a letter, uh, postage paid return opt out card, as well as a telephone number they call and a web address. And then they have 30 days to opt out. Mm -hmm. By then we'll have the rate so that we can tell them exactly what it's going to be for the duration. Yeah, the, the way it works. If, if they missed it and they want to opt out at any time, they can always opt out the day after the meter the closes, after yep. that billing period closes. They can opt back in the next month. They can play the market as much it, as they'd like to. And the bill, I believe, was also going to have the phone number and the web address on how you go about, go about opting That's out. That's correct. I remember, the townspeople voted this in. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Very well. Yeah. Okay. I need a motion. You need a motion. I will make a motion to adopt the amended community power plan dated March 12th, 2024. I second it. The motion from Ms. Queen and a second from Mr. Lynch. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? Okay. 
my only concern with bringing that up was because some people did come and say, what do you mean I'm going to be put into a program automatically? And they didn't understand it. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't either. I, I honestly didn't understand it that way. I thought you had to opt in. No, it's an opt out. But by then, like you said, they'll, we'll know the rates. It's going to be less than ever source. We're going to decide when we, as a board, we will select the rate, decide when we're going to start. So if the rates keep fluctuating and ever source is still lower, mm -hmm. we could just stay where we are until we decide to pull the, okay. pull the plug. All right, very good. And originally I'd come planning to vote no on this, but because the people did vote it in, then I, I, will, I will vote yes. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 zero, zero. Made that confusing, didn't I? You did good. So, um, but item number four: proposed town of Litchfield fee changes. Um, so uh, right off the bat, I'm gonna um, apologize and make a correction to my memo to you, which says beginning early in 2025. We haven't quite figured out how to time travel yet, but uh, that's supposed to be 2024. So back in the um, last summer and fall when we were with the budget committee, it was requested that the town completes a review mm -hmm. um, of our current town fees yep. um, to those of similar size mu municipalities. Um, this, uh, of course, raise it goes right into our revenues, which helps to offset expenses and therefore taxes um, so all the department heads um, began looking at their fees um, they were collecting data from the municipalities and as a team we drafted our recommendations um, these are building fees solid waste fees police and fire fees Many of the town clerk fees will remain the same as they are prescribed by New Hampshire state statute. Um, the fees that are associated with the planning and the zoning board of adjustment are generally handled separately and they will be proposed by those specific entities. Um, and I have uh, spoken both to the coordinator for zoning and the planning coordinator um, which can raise a discussion at those prospective boards. Um, one method of controlling budget increases is to ensure that the user fees that the town charges um, are delicately balanced um, with the fact that we know our um, services have to be affordable to the town residents. So we believe, although many of the recommended changes are increases to the fees, it's inflation and the rise in cost to perform these functions since the last in adoption in 2019 that warrant the consideration. Um, New Hampshire state statute um, says that fees or charges shall not exceed in the case of licenses or permits, an amount reasonably calculated to cover the town's cost. Um, the statute al also requires the selectmen to hold a public hear hearing prior to amendment of any fees, and we must notice that at least seven days in advance. Um, the notice shall include the proposed schedule of fees um, and we would ask that, of course, I have put as much information as I possibly can up on the Selectman's portal. And if anyone has any questions as to the proposed fees, which I have given the, each board member a printed copy, which I don't normally do, but I think there's so much data here um, that they really need to review it. Um, if any residents have any questions, please email us at townhall um, at litchfieldnh.gov. We'll get them to the department head um, and find the answers to your questions. Um, I do realize that there's a lot to digest. 
Mm -hmm. um, especially when you come to some of the building fees. I do want to say I went back and, and I looked. So the code budget in 2020 was $68,904. 2024, it's $98,138. It's a 42% increase. Mm -hmm. And I think the budget committee is correct to say we really need to increase the fees that are specifically driven to those costs. That's the fair thing to do. That's why you, you do user fees in the first place. It charges the cost to the people that are using the service. So the large sheets, um, and if you are on the portal, there's a, a large sheet, that a large uh, table <coughs> that will show you the Bow, Hampstead, Hudson, Hollis, Merrimack, Milford, Wyndham, Londonderry building fees. Um, you know, we're trying to make sure that we are in the market uh, for what you are seeing in other municipalities. But certainly, um, this is just the first pass at this. Uh, and I'm not sure what the board wants to do as you want time to review these. Can I go on record as saying I hate fees? Sure. Because I believe the fees are part of your property taxes. When you do a renovation to your house or an addition or whatever and then you get reassessed, your property value goes up, your taxes go up. I know people on the budget committee will probably be angry with me for saying that. Sorry, Kerry. I just don't like fees. I would like to say I like to review it, review this before we approve it. Oh, yeah. He's got it now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and two, I'm used to fees. Uh, as being in the prof profession, we used to charge fees for everything. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And the numbers what I'm seeing now are not too far off, or some may be a little odd, but that's beside the point. I just want to review it to get some a better feel of it. Okay. And I think there's, um, you know, so there's some new pieces that have yeah. have come up only because these are new things that we are seeing, right? Correct. So they weren't there back in 2019. So um, in solid waste, I, they're marked new. Mm -hmm. There's, yeah, they, you know, yeah. couches, chairs, sinks, things that are costing us um, that we weren't seeing a lot of um, before. Uh, Same yeah. with um, the fire department. So you're going to see a number of things that they're actually having to go out and perform specific inspections, but years ago you might not have had an inspection uh, for pyrotechnics, if I even said that right. You have the KO. <laughs> the things that go boom. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, I think there are things that have come up over the years, things that our staff are doing now that didn't exist, um, and we've tried to address them. You're also going to see a proposed refund policy on uh, building permits. Um, and that has come up. People are asking... And I, I think actually the proposed refund policy is a, is a really good one. It states that no work that has to have taken place with the permit. Mm -hmm. It has to be have 30 days uh, of the date the permit was issued. So you can't pull a permit and then two years later say, we want, I want a refund. Um, and then th they can only be requested by the party that paid the fee. Um, and so I think that is something that just hasn't been addressed in the past and should be addressed because it's been asked. Some of these weren't bad raises at all. Some no. of them were very minimal. Yeah. Yeah. Those square I haven't looked at the building ones yet. That's pretty lengthy, but 
They well, look fair. I mean, I'll just raise the one. So Hawker and Peddler um, like mm -hmm. permits, those used to be under the police department. And now they're being done on the town side um, at the selectman's office. And it had a daily um, and a weekly. It, it's never been requested, at least not in the year and a half that I've been here. But, and uh, the amount was so minuscule, it didn't seem. So we just changed it to a month and a year. Um, yeah. Most of them are asking for a year because they're, you know, your food trucks or things of that sort and their ongoing business. The ones that come through, maybe your home remodeling or your um, roof companies, they're going to pay the month because they're looking for a period of time that they can go throughout the town. So. A question. Do we, are we inspecting the, le the leach fields here as a town? Um, That's all. You don't do the final. Okay. <coughs> Reason why I'm asking that because we have a our reg regulations here are strong, stronger in set setbacks and wetlands compared to the state. That's why I asked the, que the question. It's a lot of information. <laughs> First a question, then a comment. And I see our fire chief back there. Mm -hmm. I don't see any fee here listed for you guys if you're on some kind of a detail. Your fire truck is parked out someplace for an event or something? Or? Uh, yeah, we, we already do have a detail. We, we want to catch this address and this, this uh, yeah. There's a detail rate for when we uh, have a mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you have one. Okay, so, so it's just not in here? Right. So that was just raised, I think, by the police chief to me earlier, um, you'll notice the police detail rate isn't here either. Mm -hmm. right. So well, the cruiser rate is, but not the fire. Right, right. but not the detail rate, mm -hmm. um, which generally gets paid, charged to the business, to right? The owner. The I thought it was all. Yeah. I thought it was all charged to wherever. No. If it was a cruiser yeah. and a detail an officer, yeah. That was, you know, requested by Eversource. I'll just use them as Separate an example. Yeah. Yes. And it's um, a minimum four hours, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. If I but those weren't yeah. in here. If I recall, I believe the fire chief and police chief retained the right to change the rate. They only came as a courtesy, if I remember when we talked about it before. I have to go back. I have to go back in my minutes. But I think because of the, um, the car detail rate was being done to put money in the budget to fix cars mm -hmm. it, was, it was put onto that rate but I thought the fire chief and police chief had the right to change the rate as they saw fit that would make sense that's the only thing I can think of I, I remember because we had a long conversation and it was mm. I remember the board they were concerned about the board mandating going to 75 and you know the police chief we have the right to do what we want to do we want to do something that's that's correct so but I have to go back in my notes because I was on the board when they set the last rate Okay, we'll research, yeah. We'll research it and find out both fire and police detail rates yeah. if they need to come to the board or if the, <coughs> if the two chiefs would like to just notify the board of what mm -hmm. they're doing with it. Mm -hmm. But it was not under the selectman fees. I could be completely wrong, but that's the only reason I can think of why it wouldn't be there. And why yeah. would the detail rate be there and nothing else at the same time? It was so. strange. Oh. Yeah. What, the fees? Yeah, set the no. rates, yeah. We only the contract says how much the offices will get paid, but not how much we can charge. Yes, correct. Yeah. I don't think that's I enough think for a board. detail cruiser either. I think I you thought should thought be higher than that. I thought but, the board. but they weren't. I think, I, I think you should. Yeah. I'm gonna go with five. I already crossed it up and put yeah. thirty. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember the one. Right here, <laughs> for the car. Yeah, just yeah. for the, the car. Board. Yep. It's just forty. Because they didn't. Maybe I said thirty. I said thirty. He's trying to up me. He's going to be an auctioneer. No, I'm, I'm 30. He doesn't look 30, does he? What do the other towns charge, do you know? They vary. How much do, you, how much do the other charge yeah. town for yeah. cruise and details? Um, they were 20. 20 most of the surrounding areas. Okay. 20, yeah. 
the guy that's standing there. I just think that it, it's awesome. running all the time. It's wear and tear. And I found the I found the sheets yeah. for it. Well, it doesn't run as much as you may think. Go, okay, right? it runs. It runs the whole time. I believe they came to the board to talk about it, but I believe they retain the right to change it. I would raise it. I would make that higher. Load it up with batteries. <laughs> but I could be wrong. I'm Electric cars, boss. Okay, so we already know where the police cruiser is. At least twenty. That well, and you got to deal with the, de the detail <laughs> cost. Are you are you comfortable with twenty, or you think it should be more? These. Again, in searching the, the surrounding communities, everybody's at 20. That's okay. I, I would, I mean. I would draw it. If, again, it's up to the board. If, if you go higher than that, then I would probably look and, and maybe if I am willing to adjust the, if we figure out who, who has the authority to adjust the actual detail rate, you then I'm going to make a smaller adjustment on there, but, you know, kind of yep. Yep. balance it out so that I'm in the market. Everybody seems to like you so far, so you should probably leave that in our court. <laughs> January 11, 2016 is when it was discussed. Mm, okay. It will meet in the middle of 25, but I, I don't think 20 is enough, really. Because I think it's more the, the And that's coming from a guy that doesn't like fees. That can cover the cost of what we're but I also know what it costs to run a vehicle. The office. Yeah, but there's some. I, I can we'll look at this and we'll uh, maybe our next meeting. We'll, there are yeah. That's what I like to do. There's there's some statutory mm -hmm. authority. So, for both um, chiefs. All the department heads that are here, does anybody have any comments on, on this? Everybody's good with it? You see all you out here? Yeah. Dave, yeah. I'm glad I went to the dump before you raised the fee on the tires. So we got two weeks to get the rest of them up there? Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, it's up to the board. Do you want time? Yep. Come yeah. back the next meeting yep. to set the public hearing? Yep. Have a public hearing next meeting. Yep. Uh, no. I'll go with that. Have the public hearing the next meeting or schedule the public hearing at the next meeting? How's the board want to do that? Well, let's see what the budget. After we review both sides, we're yeah. all going through the review, like you have concerns with mm -hmm. the cars and everything else. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the building permit side, which is my background, but at the other side of it, I'm looking at some other stuff here, and I don't see anything out of stuff with ten dollars for a toilet. That bothers me. So, but I just want to go back, back to the question. So, yeah. let's not have the hearing next meeting. We'll postpone it one right. so that we could review. I'll go with that. We'll review it, come back next meeting, and then okay. we'll have a hearing afterwards. Okay. So two, right. Two I thought if you had the Everyone hearing has. on the end of April, we might still meet on May 1st. Yep. So it'll be on the 22nd. On the 22nd? Yep. Okay. Good. Good with that. And if you have questions, yeah. let us know and we'll. Um, yeah. The Our department head and, and, and I will. So it'll be the 22nd. Get right back to you. That date has all the conversation in it. I don't find any reference that it's the authority of the chief, but. Okay. So, I found well, the meeting mentioned the last time we said it, yeah. What did it say? It's just a back and forth about going to $74, Manchester, outbidding. Mm -hmm. All the officers were in the back of the room and they mm -hmm. were one going, don't do it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's a long, lengthy discussion. Yeah, I remember so who, that. Made, yeah. who made the final call? Was it the department? I, I, think the, I think the board agreed with the chief and that was the recommendation. To leave it with the chief? Well, to set the rate at 64. That was the hourly rate. Of yeah, so nobody, so nobody was really making the final decision. It was an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm it went, to, that went into effect on May first, two thousand sixteen. Well, I think we'll look at RSA yeah. and see. Okay. By RSA, who has statutorily has the authority. Yeah. Okay. The, those two that. individuals have more statute authority than other departments. Yeah. Okay. It's a surprise it's not in there. That's good luck if it was yeah. different. Everybody yeah. good with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. So we'll discuss it next meeting. Okay. Uh, up next we have the Hawker Peddler approval for Farmer's Dozen Donuts. <laughs> so here's a Hawker Peddler and um, we have uh, verified and validated nice. Nice that this individual meets all of the requirements, including the background check. It is the recommendation 
of the staff to approve the hawkers and peddlers permit. Okay. And I hear the donuts are fantastic. This is the little mini donuts. I will make a motion to read. No, this is this is uh, my questions, yeah. so it's yeah. different than. Alan's mini donuts. Yeah. All right, so I'll make a motion to approve a Hawker and Peddler's permit for 2024. You can second it. Kevin already Did, made Yeah, it. I know. He just said it, but no one knows what it's, he's saying. Uh, <laughs> to Jacob just McQuestion, DBA it. Farmers Dozen Donuts, recommended by we'll, Town we'll take that Department as... State License Verified and Background. Well, I do read it for me. we got Matt sitting here. He, he needs to understand what we're making a motion for. All right. We have a rec uh, a motion. <laughs> a motion by Mr. Gannon. And I'll second it. Second by Mr. Lynch. Are you guys good with that now? Yes. I am okay. One okay. way or the other. Right. Any, Sitting right there. You just can read it. I know I understand what you're saying. All, right. All, All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 500. Okay. You don't have a computer over You need one to get this straight. Okay, good. Up next, we have stormwater contracts. Um, CEI Environmental. Ms. Kleiner, what you got? So, stormwater, okay. favorite subject. Yep. Um, we have done an awful lot um, with stormwater this year, um, working with CEI, um, Comprehensive Environmental Incorporated, um, and you know, big thank you to uh, Nick who has worked with us. The Warren Article, Warren Article or Zoning Amendment mm -hmm. 3 passed. Um, I did issue a notification back to the EPA because we were under order, a standard order, um, to bring that Warren Article forward. Um, so we have notified them that we have done so. Once that warrant article passes, then what it requires is the planning board to do a deep dive and um, align their regulations um, with the post-construction mm -hmm. um, ordinance of the, that was passed. So they have done, uh, Nick has gone through and done um, a draft of those regulations, and we are actually meeting with the planning board um, April 2nd to discuss all that. Um, but here we are in 2024, and we need to approve a contract with CEI um, for things going forward. And each year we are working on different pieces of that 2017 permit um, so this year um, one of the things that we have to look at is our parks and our open space um, and we have to just write up a operation and, and maintenance uh, plan for how we are going to address um, our maintenance on things that work for stormwater um, the other thing, dry weather, um, outfall sampling, we do that every year. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking at a facility inventory, so we have to look at all of our permanently owned uh, open space and buildings and facilities um, where there's any type of runoff. And we have to go through and we have to chart all that. Um, there's an annual training that the highway department um, is required to take um, and then CEI assists um, me with the writing of the annual report so that cost us fifteen thousand dollars this is under the road agent mm -hmm. um, contracting line yep. um, and so we are asking for the board's approval of a contract with CEI for $15,000 um, and Karen probably knows the line, but I don't. It's the contracting line under oh, the road under, agent. Um, road agent. Under, yeah. under stormwater contracts. So. so. So we need a motion to approve a stormwater contract in the amount of fifteen thousand dollars to CEI Environmental. 
a mega motion. We approve the fifteen thousand dollars for the stormwater contract. Okay, for this coming year. Second. CEI con. CEI. Okay. okay. We have a motion Mr. from Mr. Lynn. Second. Second, Second from Mr. <laughs> Brunel. Thank you. All right. Any discussion? All those in no. favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries five zero zero. And now that I've got that approval, we'd like to move on to 2025. Oof. <clears throat> That's so a big number. It's April. <laughs> um, no, it's technically March, but mm -hmm. we we'll call it April. Okay. Um, we would like the board's consideration, and we would strongly suggest on the next town meeting. We start an expendable trust for stormwater. Mm -hmm. And the second contract gives you an idea of what that price tag is going to be. Really? That contract is $72,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, some of this work is work that mo many municipalities are doing this year. It's not in our budget. Um, we believe that we've shown an, enough improvement, which we can put off some of these larger tasks until next year. But as you'll, if you look at the municipalities around us, Londonderry just passed one on their the big one. Uh, warrant this past town meeting. Yep. Um, we've got to start putting away the money for this as we we realize it's an unfunded mandate um thanks government we know that but <clears throat> we don't have a choice so we're looking uh next march to have this as a warrant article now are these going to be reoccurring costs i think one they go up and down, okay. right? So, I mean, in some years, it's heavy, and and you get the processes set up, and, and it, it can flow downward the next year in cost. Yep. But the 2017 permit required an awful lot of work. Um, we're in year six. Um, who knows what the next permit is going to require? 2017, that's going by. Yeah. Yes. So hopefully, you know, next year's at 725 2026 hopefully is lower. It's not going to run it's not going to have a run rate of around $70,000 a year as far as we know. I think it'll be less, but I don't think you're going back to 15. Right. Um, you know, I think <clears throat> we're doing an awful lot. We got the grant from um, DES to perform the asset management, the stormwater asset management. Some of this um, $72,000 work will go into that. So we'll have that data going forward. Um, but then others of it is kind of your baseline data. So each year you're just collecting data and adding it to the system that you've created. Um, I think we were significantly behind. Mm -hmm. um, and some of it's just lack of staff. Yeah. In Litchfield, we have been behind for the yeah. stormwater management management since it came out years ago. Okay, you had to go around and do everything, identify it. It's a small town, it's not a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you get into like a city type of environment, it's a little more complicated because mm -hmm. you get every catch basin that goes to every house and goes over the place. But mm -hmm. I know I've done the review for a town that I work <coughs> in. When they first came out with it, my job was to go out and relocate, or locate everything on a plan, and I did that for them. Here we haven't had that done. We got plans to show where things are. It's just a matter of pulling those plans out because they're relatively new. Well, they, our, our stuff is, rel is relatively new, mm -hmm. so it shouldn't be hard to locate and put it in place. But we've actually just completed a lot of GPS tagging. I know we got more to do, but that's yes. still underway. Yeah. Yes, they, that's already being done. I always done a great job at, at collecting data and um, but issues come up. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Blackwell just left, but you know, Dara Pond. Yeah. So our residents are reaching out to us. The water level is rising. Um, Nick and his group had already been out there 
and they're showing that there's an outfall, mm -hmm. but we can't find it. It's there. It, they've got to go it's, it's and relocate it or dig it, dig it up to find out what's going on. Okay, because it does show it on the plan. The easement goes through there as the awful and goes over the Half Moon Pond and goes from there down to the brook. There's an outfall there. It's been there for years. So when they did the subdivision of Dara up in that area, in that Grouse, what is it, Grouse Street? Okay, there is a the septic designs plus also the subdivision shows the culverts in there. So we got to pull out all that Dad, the data and talk to the homeowner about it. Okay. Well, if, if anybody knows exactly where that outfall is, I'll help you. Um, CEI hasn't been able to locate it. Um, do that. I can do that this week. Perfect. Great. Thank yeah. you. The owner and I are familiar Jeff. with each other. So. Just a clarification. So this is an example of a contract we would enter in, in 2025. So it would be July of 2025 to July of 2025. Yeah. Four years. Because well, the way this reads here, it's July 2023 to June 30th, 2024. Um, if I'm, it's in part of the annual report part, but. You reading the first one or the second, second one? Second one, the larger the one. one. So the larger one, if it passed town meeting, we would start those, yeah. those tasks <clears throat> immediately. 2023. 2025, all right. Yeah. What happens if the warrant fails? We're still obligated to do this. We are. Welcome to town go, go, government. Yes, yes, nope. <laughs> yeah. And, and with an unfounded mandate, this is some of the problems that has we caused right now. Yep. towns to be behind. Yeah, this is what's yeah. been, with stormwater, this has been the challenge because when I was in the board in 2017, things changed. We got flat-footed. We all said these requirements we couldn't mm -hmm. meet. We didn't have staff to do it. Yep. That's when we started using an engineering firm to help get us through the paperwork piece of it. Yeah. We were just buying time. We had that tax cap. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The key component to half of it is it feels new development-wise compared to older towns, okay? Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of good things that are available that are there to find. Mm -hmm in the room next door. That we can use that to go locate and oh I know over the years when things when people build stuff some things like to fall into the wrong place to block it off. That's what's going on in this case. Yep. <laughs> so it's a matter of uh, just ed re educating them plus to get it corrected. Which is not gonna be a problem. The unfortunate part is it doesn't change <clears throat> the cost. The cost is the cost. The cost, the cost, <coughs> cost yeah. helps it. They could go faster, but the cost is still the cost. There's always a cost. And we are constantly looking at the state and at DES for grants and things. Yep. Um, the University of New Hampshire has assisted. Um, and so some of the phosphorus and some of these other. But, I mean, the other day I was on a three-hour <laughs> tour. <laughs> instruction <laughs> tour. <laughs> Um, instruction um, seminar on you know how to perform these calculations which if they were financial calculations count me in but these were more engineering calculations count, count me, me out, out. Um, and so it's very difficult and and yes larger cities have whole departments that just deal with this you know multiple and then we have Litchfield <laughs> and then and, and Kevin's group does a wonderful job. I agree with um, that. They absolutely do. Um, so and I had talked about that drainage issue up in Dara already, and mm -hmm. I know what's there, what needs to be done, and he does too. It's just a matter of educating everything in this case. Plus yeah. the fact that we've had so much rain. That pond hasn't been this high in years. No. Okay. And it's not just because of the drainage. I've seen it higher myself, even with the drainage not there, where the, the house is not built. It used to be higher. Okay. And, you know, we wondered whether the offline wells is no longer drawing. Right. So, 
I mean, we found memos from DES which said thousands of gallons were being drawn from Correct. there. Mm -hmm. And now you're not doing it. Now you're not doing it. So that naturally tells you that the, the, weather, the water level was high. But we just wanted to put this at the top of your list. And we'll remind you again once budget season comes. Mm -hmm. that Good. I'll work on that one this, this week. And those of us that have been in town for a while, we know that the level at that pond has always gone up and down. Yeah, and always ever been. since they put the well in there instead of pump, pump, it's always been too low in my mind. Yeah. Okay. And because there's such a there was such a bank, I, we never when I was growing up there was never a dry spot through the summer, and even with the camp there, yeah. it was always full. Yeah. Okay. Well, so. from my understanding, and I have not witnessed it personally, but um, from the department heads that have, there are now backyards that are are losing significant amounts of their usable space, mm -hmm. and at least one fire pit that's underwater. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm going to say something about that. If you look <laughs> carefully at the drainage and the, and the vegetation around there, that is an area where it's flooded more. And that's what it's designed to do. It's an overflow area. It's been there for years. I looked at it this week, and yeah, the guy put a pit somewhere down there, and that's nice. Move it closer to the house. But he's got it down because it's in the low area where the water does go in there. That's all I can say right now. I think it's very hard, too, for residents to always understand that, you know, they buy a yep. property. And that this section of it is just for wetlands, right? And so you buy a property and, and not everybody looks at their entire deed, although we strongly suggest <laughs> people do. Um, we said but, that us along the Merrimack River too. We never seen the water come up as high as it did. It's called flooding. Okay, it, it is, happens. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So 1936, I know somebody's and his life at the cemetery because the that's where the we was are. Underwater. <laughs> that doesn't remember. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> so we've already approved the one, right? And you the did. The one. We're holding that for now. It'll come ask for a warrant later this year. To establish a spendable trust? Yes. Budget committee likes those. <coughs> we'll say that. Yeah, it takes the shock out of the $72,000 price tag. Well, it's just, mm -hmm. it's planning. It's just planning. That's all. It is. That, that's the right thing to do. So, all right. Good here? Good here, sir. We have to, we have to give you your permission and approval. Up next, we have um, proposed Board of Selectmen bylaws, which they came out the other day. Has everybody had a chance to look at them? Yeah. Yep. Discuss. Yeah. I saw that some grammar um, articles were, were pouring up. <laughs> That's all right. You, you didn't change the intent or the meaning of anything. It was just. Uh, I don't believe I, anything I did would, would be have to be approved anyway. But yeah. I don't yeah. believe I did. Might want to just change the first line. Which, which one? First line? Um, First line? The Nottingham Select Board. What? Yeah. It says up here. I'm Pursuant to NHRSA 41. Oh, it does oh. say. Oh. How, how did I miss that? I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, we could change our name. So. <laughs> I was reading Granted. that for you. Nottingham where? <laughs> what? Guess I'm good so, at plagiarism. Well, <clears throat> I, I will say. That being said. This had. <laughs> We'll change that, but, and I put it right out there so that you could see. You know what? I read it and I didn't pick that up. All of the <laughs> towns. I can't believe you didn't pick I it didn't up. pick it up. That we looked at. Yeah. Yeah. And Nottingham was just one. Okay. Um, Graham, Guilford, Bow. Mm -hmm. Uh. Hmm. Milford, Lee, Newport, Swansea. There was a bunch of them. Um, so 
and I, I spoke to John on this because we, every board and commission has bylaws. And last year we noticed CIP didn't have any. Mm -hmm. So we went and CIP established them and wrote them last year. And I could not find where the board had bylaws. And John said they discussed it back in 2008. So they were supposed to go to the town clerk, but Terry doesn't believe that she ever received the final copy, and we can't seem to find them. Is that still the case? I have not found them. Um, the previous office manager was the one that was supposed to be doing that. I only knew about them because they were mentioned when I was on the board. We had an operating practice, and I always just thought it was the Robert's rules, but you know, we had an extra set of bylaws, and I don't even think I've ever actually read them, to be honest with you. Um, but... Uh, yeah, according to the minutes that I found, they were discussed a couple different times. Mm -hmm. And one time it was, have they been filed with the clerk's office? And they would, yes, they'll be taken care of. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I haven't seen them, she and I haven't found, found the actual either. document source yet, neither. Did you check that point in Delaware's area? No, that was Delaware's area. It would have been in your old office, in your office. But your your desk has already been changed five times over, so. Yeah, I, I mean, if it went to Jason, if I don't want to refile. Contracts, everything. Yeah, this was prior to a TA, though. Yeah, this was before Laura. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before Lori. Before Lori, yeah. Lori had been here since the. But it was um, it was it was Howard. Oh. oh. So he. Yeah, was the, but he so he might have kept it in oh because he was the finance when yeah. Cecile left and then Howard and then he was the, he was the selectman's assistant too. Yeah, we believe in we see in but June. I think that's a good place to look. June of 08 he was asked to make some changes and then give it to the town clerk and mm -hmm. uh, we can't find in the town clerk's office where it was ever in a way I would still argue that those those would need to be updated. Yeah. Yeah. Because your meetings times have changed, your you know a lot of your structure has changed, and, and certainly now you have a town administrator select board um, structure. So, um, you know, we took the best part of all those policies and tried to bring it in, left out some parts that we didn't think fit the spirit of Litchfield. Um. I think that probably what we should do is maybe everyone review this again, see if we see any more errors, <laughs> <laughs> and vote on it next week. I, I didn't catch that one, so I'm, Steve, good to you for catching that. The first sentence, too. Go ahead. But I do have a question on yeah. it. Yeah. Comparing. We can still discuss, but. Uh, what page? C. Oh, in the second. Would we need a public hearing before the document? I think I do. Um, for the bylaws of your board, you do not. Okay. They govern you, not the town. Okay. What's your question? Uh, just, I have two, actually. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? Um, a, Article 3A. What's the difference between, I probably should know this, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Parliamentary procedures are followed versus the Roberts rules. What is the difference of that? So 1A under Article 3 on page 2. Page 2. Page 2, Article yep. 3A. <coughs> yep. So yep. what, uh, just for my own clarification, number B, I should say B. Yep. Ensure the informal, what is that? Parliamentary it's, procedures are followed. It's Robert's versus, Rules of Order. Right yeah. Is that Robert's Rules? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I was like, thing. what's the difference? Okay, perfect. So it's the same thing. Okay. All right, and then my big question, mm -hmm. uh, page 3. Primary mm -hmm. duties, which is section C. Yeah. Four and seven. I just want to make sure I understand these. If we could read them together. The Board of Selectmen has historically, so this is four. Mm -hmm. Although the Board of Selectmen has historically delegated many of its responsibilities to staff members, at the enhanced levels of expertise, qualifications, and specific competencies, it's important to note that nothing herein is intended to imply the Board of Selectmen cannot assume control over its obligations. And it should also be understood, <coughs> excuse me, that the Board of Selectmen retains final decision-making authority over its responsibilities. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. Yep. But I do think the second, I just want to make sure the second item in number seven, 
Second sentence in item seven, go further down. Members shall recognize the administrative chain of command by directing questions, complaints, mm -hmm. discussions, you know, to the town administrator. Part C? <clears throat> yep, part C, go down to number seven. Number so I agree with number eight, four, right? that's yep. fine. So then if you go down to number seven. You're going number eight, right? Yeah. Number seven says members shall yep. treat employees. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Okay. But uh, the first sentence is okay. Yeah. The second sentence, members shall recognize the administrative chain of command. Okay. Uh, by directed questions, complaints to the town administrator. Yep. And that's fine. I have no problem yep. with that yes. standalone. But I just don't know if there is an emergency. We can't get the town administrator. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure what we do. I don't know if chair. we override or the, you know the board of the, the chair. board of the, the chair. Board, yeah. board in the chair. Yeah, and if we can't is get the chair, can... to you. Okay, so I just uh, it's not. Is it there somewhere? Said the chair has no authority without the board. Yes. Okay, so it's going to so be the board. Obviously, side. however we communicate to make yep. sure you you're empowered to do what you got to do. Yep. If the administrator leaves us, it's going to be the board. Yeah, we'll call back to the board. Right. Which, okay. In which case, okay. you'll all get a phone call. <laughs> all right, yes. so we follow the chain of command, obviously. Yep. I'm just saying, in the emergency, we can't get to you, but we have to get mm -hmm. to your department. we got to get to somebody in your department. You're not here or around. Yes, we can CC you courtesy on an email, yeah, but we have so to act, right? It, it so is that at, at the board itself? It happens you know, quite often. The board itself, right? Yep. Okay, chair. fine. Yep. I Through mean, the, the members the should I'll go to the chair. Board. And the chair would contact the department head. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, quite often it will happen if I'm I'm not yep. here, mm -hmm. right? And the chair just reaches out to the fire chief because yep. there's a, and you know, generally either, either the fire chief will circle around and just let me know, um, yep. or the chair will. It, it happens. Yep all time yeah generally if somebody reaches out to me i usually tell the rest of the board before i move on to anything else yes, because yeah. somebody might have a good suggestion i just don't want the i don't want the chain of command trampled on yep. so bob is getting. always re if uh, somebody went to him he tells everybody you know like, okay yeah. all right but yeah that's a, that's a good point there well i think the point of it too is the buck stops at the board it always does yeah, right. yeah. so it's just retaining yeah. our Retaining oh. our authority, but also recognizing that we've delegated a lot of our tasks to the day-to-day -day operations. Yes. I'll give a good example of number four. Mm -hmm. um, Three and nine. So the enhanced levels of expertise. A good example of that is those in, in front of you this evening. Elderly, um, veteran, Mm -hmm. applications for exemptions and credits mm -hmm. are incredibly detailed yep. and they require you to you know be thoroughly um, knowledgeable of the state statutes that govern them so the board has given that task to staff but they come back here and you retain the authority to finally approve them or deny them. So that, that's an example of number four. Mm -hmm. I think I just revert back to the end of number four. If you're not here, we can't follow the chain of command. If we go back to number four, the mm -hmm. last statement basically says the board, right, the board of selectmen retains the decision. Right. Yep. So, okay. I mean, I would assume if we have to go around chain of command, it's an emergency. It's yeah, that generally. That's, that was my point, yeah. yeah. Generally. I mean, it has to be, a, in my opinion, a drastic emergency yeah. that it can't wait a day or whatever. And I think our team, I mean, our team works so well together that we circle back and we say, hey, this happened, and, you know, just to keep each other all in the loop. Um, yeah, we have a fantastic yeah. team. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, we've always given the department heads a leeway to do what, you know, their yep. jobs. We don't micromanage them. So we'll, we'll post this when it's approved, right? Yeah. <laughs> on the, on the yeah, website. Yeah, we'll come back <laughs> next meeting yeah. and people can see it, yeah. People might have found some more. Um, <laughs> to be, to be honest, this is, to be honest, this is more about our rules and how we must, must right. behave and act, yep. not necessarily what the what our department heads are. Correct. Um, the only thing I saw in here that I was not surprised by, because I did see it in a couple of references and other examples, was the term limits on the vice chair and the chair. And I always felt like that was naturally going to happen anyway as as oh. members move along, right? Yeah. 
And I, I've been stating that for a couple of years, that a chair should only serve for a couple of years. And, um, you know, that I, I always believe that a vice chair, a person should be a vice chair before the chair, so they get a chance to run a meeting if the chair's not there Great. or whatever. But just so it doesn't become somebody, you know, one person's board, um, as, you know, as it has in the past. So it's my thought to just keep the blood flowing. Correct. This only applies to the board of select, right? Because I, I think the other commissions have their own bylaws. They do. Correct. Right. Yeah. I think with conservation, they can do two, but then they have to have unanimous support for a third. Yeah, something like that. So something because like that. that's under yeah. Yeah. Well, nobody else wants it. And this is what they want. <laughs> yes. But that would be unanimous. That's, yeah. <laughs> and, and so that can always be changed. I, I, went. I like that. I, I actually like that. that one. No, I, I think I like it too. I just I think there needs to be an escape clause in case we're in a situation where no one wants it. Ah. That's always a top op an option, right? Mm -hmm. No one wants it. I think one of the bylaws I saw, it, it literally states that. Yeah. It's this unless no so one else wants, wants it. Because okay. you can't run without a chair Nobody effectively. Chair. You can't. If someone doesn't yeah. want the job, it's not going to be done well. So. so maybe we need to go back and question look on this? and see what that. Yeah, I think it actually just said, Perfect. or in the case where there's, you know, this this would be, ex there'd be oh. an exception. Mm -hmm. In case of nobody wants it. Okay. Lord knows I don't want it, so. <laughs> I do have another question on this. Yeah. Article 2, uh -huh. D, 2. So D. we assigned a budget committee rep, a heritage commission rep, a planning board rep. Are we doing D here, zoning? Does this say has to do it or may include the following? It says to include the following, but we don't. We didn't do a zoning board of appeals rep. No, we won't do that. And then, if I go to the next page, well, first of all, do you want to handle that I one don't, for us? I don't I see it's zoning. zoning out. It's zoning out. I took zoning yeah, out. out. Yeah. I have D here. Yeah. Do you still have D? Did I print it earlier? Yeah. D. A B C. Emergency management. What do you have for D? I have zoning board of appeals. Budget, capital, did I conservation. Oh, you removed it? Okay. I did remove it. Oh, okay. It. Emergency yeah. management, you facilities, heritage. I got to get the new one. What about G? We have G and H, right? Recreation, ad hoc. Is NRPC a required one? Uh, I had no. to get voted in by the planning board, right? <laughs> I'm just yeah. asking. Our NR NRPC rep does not. Or need SIP. To I think I was checking SIP. They do have to be approved by the governing body. But they don't need to be a member of the governing body. Nope. I think it's a nod, right? If the planning board has to approve it, right? No. I was so sworn Jay in last actually time. sent me yeah. um, terminology that says the NRPC. Commissioners mm -hmm. need to be approved by the local governing body. The mm -hmm. um, I did not ask. I'm sorry if they had to be a member of the local governing body. I would assume no, but I don't no. know that for sure, right? I do know. In some cases, uh, no, no, they don't because oh, Michael Crodo is the alternate. Yeah. So okay. But yeah. Ralph Baum is a commissioner, and he's right. not on the right. planning board. Right. <clears throat> yeah. There's a lot of people I know Ralph that are all. So in, and hence, don't put it in the this group. document. <laughs> As being great. a requirement. Right. That's what yeah. the question was. Let's yeah. leave it out. So on the, what I'm seeing at NRPC when I first started back in 2017 or 18, most a lot of people were planning board members. But it's changed. Yep. It's board of selectmen, um, you know, uh, s uh, state reps, commissioners, you know, mm -hmm. uh, aldermen. So it, it, they have the governor, you know, his ear. Mm -hmm. So it's like influential. So that's chair. you're seeing less that, planning board members on it. Yes, I anyway, think so. Anyway, but the planning board still has to that. give it the nod. You want it? No. I think so. So SIP, do we need a SIP person here, or does that fall under planning board? Because I, I know the law changed about board. SIP. Does SIP fall under the board of selectmen now? Or, and we yeah. delegate it to the yeah. planning board? So do you want to add a SIP person to this bylaws? Or? Oh. It is, isn't is it? Again, I might have yeah. a little copy here. All right, so <laughs> let me read what's on here. <laughs> Budget committee representative. Yeah. B is capital improvement Budget planning committee. C is conservation commission representative. D is emergency manage management committee representative. E is facilities committee. Yep. F is heritage commission. G is planning board. H is recreation. And I is ad hoc. Don't no, just a SIP really? answer to the board. Of I haven't, I guess yes. I, have, I printed C. it earlier. <laughs> or B. Page two. I'm a, oh, I'm still here. So it says here that we, if we're supposed to, it says um, assignments to include the following groups, right? Mm -hmm. I have budget, heritage, you, planning. You, you, your document's zoning. outdated. Yeah, you, yeah I know. You, know the, yeah. you have an old one. I know. But is SIP I on think it? I printed new ones for on everyone. It. Perfect. Thank you. 
Oh. Oh. It's also a, it's a, there's a link to it online, so you can go right to it online yeah. if you want to. Yeah, but I highlighted this one. I highlighted this one. That's the issue. That's, oh, no, that's okay. Yep. All right. Now, did you want NRPC here? Because it had to be voted on by the governing body, right? I don't think you want NRPC here okay. because these are members There's of the board both. that get. Oh, the boards. Okay. NRPC is separate. It, from right. Okay. It's selectman li liaisons, not. Yeah, oh, no, we can keep it. I can so keep you have it. an updated one. Well, my marks are here. All right. That, that's so all I had. More. I know you. I'm generous. <laughs> I have enough paper and all. So we will come back. Yeah, we'll come back. That's what I think of my copy. <laughs> <laughs> printed it too early. I'll take it. Just well, my, on the, on the comments or the suggestions, you can accept or deny whatever you want to choose. In, in book, they'll get rid of them all and put it back to where you want. Okay. So, you don't like my wording. <laughs> oh, I think this is one. All right, we good there? We're good. Up next, we have town administrator and selectman reports. Uh, no, I think we have reappointment. Did I not put that on the oh, agenda? Didn't we, didn't we move that up to the top? No, oh. board and commission reappointment. Reappointments we have of boards that needed oh. people oh. updated. Oh. Are they here? Well, they're reappointments, right? Yeah, okay. the reappointments. So the number eight. Yeah, Jared O'Connell for the planning board. He's a reappointment for a term not to expire until March. 2027. Okay. Uh, Jared O'Connell, March 2077. Okay. Then. Well, I think we need to interview Mr. Weber before we appoint yeah. him to rec, as we do everybody else. Really? We always we always interview really? before we appoint. Yep, we do. They come here and we ask them why they want to be on the on the commission. Because yeah. so we'll he has free time. Yep. He has free time. So we'll meeting. move that to the next meeting. But the other ones we can. Entertain motions for acceptance. No, see, if we accept it tonight, he has to go to tomorrow's meeting. <laughs> He's probably going to go tomorrow anyway. <laughs> He'll yeah. go no, was I recommended by the planning board? Yes. Oh, when yes. did that happen? When I was not it, there last week? Is last week. Our, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. My son they was sick. They discussed okay. it last week. Um, we go gone to the bathroom and they had nominated No, no, my son was the one that was sick. Okay. Um, right. You Good. as a commissioner, Michael Curto as the alternate, and both are only for periods of one year. Good. Make a motion that we point doc, doc, Dr. Kim, Mike Michael Crow, Crow, Crodo to the NRPC Commit Commission. Yep. Mike being no more than all an alternate for one year. Expiring March 2025. We have a motion from Mr. Lynch. Second. <clears throat> Second from Mr. Gannon. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries five zero zero. Right, so we got to recommend Jared. them all, right? And then we do yeah, Jared, Jared. O'Connell. I'll make the I'll make a motion to recommend by the planning board the reappointment of Jared O'Connell for a term of for a term to expire March of twenty twenty seven. I will motion. second it. Motion from Mr. Brunel, second from Mr. Gannon. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries five zero zero. Do you, do you really want to hold on, Steve? Steve come I, I like to. I'll, I'll make a motion to recommend um, Steve Weber for Recreation Commissioner as an alternate for the term to expire on March 31st, 2027. I think, I think he showed his commitment to this town. And that, I'll second that. And I don't usually. Can I amend that? I'd like to have a condition that he show up at the next selectman meeting so we can swap it out. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries five zero zero. <clears throat> and I'm sure I'll hear about that one. <laughs> okay, now we have town administrator and selectman reports. Okay. Uh, we get the budget right next. I'm not gonna go through this all, but the um, so those of you that um, look at the selectman's portal, I have the details on the new website. Um, the real important ones are that the internal team will give concept approval on May 3rd. Um, staff will be going through training on May 14th, 15th, and 16th. And hopefully we'll have a website launch on May 30th. Very nice. Um, it's like connect corrections are due by the 17th. Okay. 
Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, there's quite a process. We've been through um, quite a bit. And now in May, there's a, there's a lot of work that is done. I think one of the other important things to know is except for minutes being posted and agendas being posted, they ask for no changes to our existing website after March 29th. So. Okay. Don't send me anything. <laughs> Don't send me anything. <laughs> um, and then uh, stormwater, I covered that earlier. Um, that is my email um, to Mr. Kalaletti at the EPA. Um, does the fire chief want to give his own update on the, the cert, cert team? team? <laughs> Come on up. Come on up. We have a special guest speaker tonight, folks. Chief Doug Nichols. Nice to see him out. Yeah, right. Fast as bedtime. It is. I'm ready for bed. Um, so the, the CERT team's going along really well. Uh, we've had two meetings. Our next one is April 1st. Uh, we have had uh, a good showing of people. Uh, one meeting, we had 30 people that showed up. Hmm. Um, out of the 30... Um, kind of been whittling some, some people away that, uh, you know, haven't been coming back. Um, I was able to get the London Dairy CERT team uh, who has certified instructors to host here a certified uh, CERT class. It's a 16-hour required class to be part of a CERT team that's going to be held May 4th and 5th at the fire station. Um, and then once that's done, whoever attends those two eight-hour days will have a cert certification, which will cover first aid, search and rescue, uh, stop the bleed, um, some, some fire uh, parts to it, and some medical components to it, uh, which should be good. In our next meeting, which is April 1st, uh, we have a certified flagger program that Primex is going to sponsor. Uh, so I think between between that and the certified class, we'll be in good shape for uh, being able to do things for the town. Um, and then out of that, so far, I think I only have like 14 people that are signed up for that uh, fourth and fifth. Course. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was only given two dates that they were able to hold the class in. There's only uh, a handful of people that actually are certified to teach the class. So that's fourth and fifth. Well, you'll have a lot of company on the fourth. Yeah, right next door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, the Veterans Park. Yep. <laughs> Dedication. Yep. Yeah. It's good. It'll be busy. Somebody ought to bring a grill and some burgers. We have a big grill. We can do that. So very good. Anybody have any questions? Nope, I'll be here on the 4th and 5th. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, be here. I'll be around on the 4th anyway, so I don't know about the 5th. Maybe take a flag, of course. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's harmless. Well, it'll be interesting to take it to see if, I mean, we've been doing it for years, but to see what they actually teach you in a flaggers class yep. would be interesting. Mm -hmm. good. good to know. Yeah. Okay, thank you enough for taking care of this, heading this for us. So important. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we're, we finally got it up and running, so that'll be good. Right. And I think you'll get more down the road. And, and, and actually, we also, uh, the police chief has offered a, a trailer that they have. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking to put a trailer together with uh, barri uh, barricades and cones in it, mm -hmm. um, whether it's under emergency management or under the CERT team. Because now, like when something happens, you know, we look for Kevin to show up and go find bat, you know, barricades or whatever. I'd like to have a trailer that's all set to go so police, fire, highway, or a CERT member can go grab a trailer and have all the barricades and cones that we need instead of trying to, you know, collect them at the last second. Yeah, yeah. that's a good idea. And I don't know what he has for a trailer, but I know Conservation has the old town trailer. Yeah, we're, we're going to, I guess his, his trailer, he said he thinks needs tires, so I was going to look at that one, and if not... And I was going to ask about the, the one that's not being used down at the, <coughs> the old fire station. Yeah. By now, that probably needs tires, too. But I just, I just, you're talking about the white one? Yeah. yeah I just uh -huh. used it when we did the uh, deliberative, so it oh. ran fine. 
They, I think they put tires on it. I think he said he had to do something to it. I'm not sure. Make it roadworthy. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> be good. Well, they're not cracked. It's a good sign. I just got a sticker on other past inspection. <laughs> <laughs> no inspectors for trailers. Yeah. Oh, where is it? Yeah. Kidding. No, I didn't get it. I need another piece of information. Oh, okay. Sorry. Actually, they're totally sticking around. Oh, no. But now she's over it because it's there. Sorry. You can go to bed now. Yeah. You can go to bed now. All right. I'm going to seek gold overruling. So, you guys have any other so, questions about <clears throat> Surter? Nope. No, I think, again, thanks so much for doing this, everyone involved. Yeah, well, I mean, it's been really good because we've had a good showing from the community, yeah. which yep. is what, what you need. So That's what you want, yeah. Yeah. So, and then hopefully we'll be able to offer a lot to the town once we get up and running. Mm -hmm. yeah, and people attending are truly interested, mm -hmm. which is which was really good. Corey's been there at all of them. Yep. He's voluntold. Yeah. <laughs> you can so, be one of the leaders. Corey is voluntold. <laughs> oh, there was um, there no, was one no, other no. piece of um, that we were going to bring to you t this evening, and I'm just waiting for one document from the state, but that is um, I have alerted Code Red that we will not be renewing our contract after this year. It's two-part. Uh, a state system that um, the chief made me aware of that we can get for free, and we all like that word. Um, and our website mm -hmm. has a mass notification system, our new website. Mm -hmm. um, so we believe between the two of those, we will not need to pay the code red. Um, I just, uh, the chief didn't know I didn't get that other document I needed for this evening so um, we'll bring it to you next meeting then the other one is we are going to need another public auction um, the road agent has a couple sanders there's a couple trailers um, camper what the camper camper no, I <laughs> garbage um, so we'll have those we'll bring that um, equipment to you at next meeting for approval. Nice. Right. Cool. Thank you again. Thank you. Yeah, have a good night. Thank right, Doug. Thank you, Doug, for staying so long. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I enjoy you guys immensely. <laughs> <laughs> That's you what you said the other standards, man. <laughs> <laughs> you raised your standards. Um, the next, I put in this in because um, I didn't know if you all had a chance to see it. It came in yeah. late this afternoon from yep. uh, Mrs. Brennan on the yeah, recreation. Um, your, mm -hmm. The Easter scavenger hunt is this mm -hmm. Saturday, 10 to noon. It's been on our, our board. Um, then April 14th, the two seniors from Campbell High School um, that was very interesting at their meeting. They discussed that. Um, and the plumbing problems at Talent Hall. Continue. They do continue. But we have had um, both been Mr. There. Blackwell and Smith Plumbing yep. back there mm -hmm. um, to look at them. So I, I believe the urinal is fixed but I, I'm gonna double check um, with rec they got a lot of use Saturday night <laughs> was it leaking Saturday night nope okay. so we got a lot of use <laughs> okay I, I, I thought I it talked, was fixed I did but... talk to Smith who was there working on it he had his two trucks and I know the guy so I pulled in his, to see how well they're doing they got it under control yeah I mean, and, and thank you they're to good. Uh, Jolt, who went over and, and powered up the, the, put in the service for the new yep. water heater. Oh, cool. Um, Thanks, So, um, on that note, mm -hmm. I have a sad, um, sad for us here. Um, so, we have had a contractor um, who has been performing janitorial services mm -hmm. here. Um, both police, town side, the library, and at Talent Hall. 
and at CTV, I think he's done some. He has done, yeah, over there too. Um, he's extraordinary, and he has informed me that June will be the end. <sighs> he's leaving. I know, Bro- breaks all of our hearts. Um, so, um, unfortunately. I think the hours that we are requiring between all the buildings and the amount that our budget can afford just don't align. Okay. Um, so that's, that's he's, done, he's done a nice job. That's unfortunate because I yeah. don't think the buildings ever looked so good. Um, <coughs> the next one is the a letter from DES notifying those of the Hillcrest water expansion Mm -hmm. that they need to send back their forms by April 1st. Um, So this is the dissent decree is expiring and Mm -hmm. um, they need to get all of those costs in. I did talk to Penichuk right after and they said if it's you know a week or so it's probably not as big a deal but Mm -hmm. people should should try to get them back um i had someone reach out and ask about filter systems Mm -hmm. and that has ended there was one section of litchfield where there is not water service and Penanchuk has no intention of li- laying pipe, at least in the short term, and they were offered filtration, yep. um, but it's not being offered to those that can hook up. I mean, that is sad. It's always been my thought that the homeowners should have the option. Of either taking Penichuck or getting a filtration system through St. Gobain. I mean, I don't know if at some point this board's going to have to sign off on anything, but I'm not willing to sign off if they're not willing to take care of the homeowners. I, in my case, I had the pipe brought into the house, but I'm not connected. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not sucking off the water because my well came back good. Mm-hmm. Okay, because mm-hmm. and the, word, the only thing that I got out of it so far, ever since they put that line in, my water, I had to put a purification system in because mm-hmm. my well was being affected. They jostled you. Because I get groundwater. Uh, I'm not deep. My yeah. well is four feet deep. Mm-hmm. It's in the basement and it's two and a half feet around. And uh, mm-hmm. it's so I had to put a filtration system for the silt because they hit the vein. Right. Okay. They are, they are <coughs> recommending that. Even if you don't want to hook up right now, at least take advantage of la- laying the pipe. Yeah. Because it's going to be expensive later. Mm-hmm. Take advantage of that. Uh, somebody asked me, that, Margaret. You worry down the road about some, but it's some future instance that people are going to be required right. to get yeah. it. That question came up to me. It's not a, proper either. This week, where I said, I recommended. The person to at least get the water, the water line into the house, mm-hmm. and just and get that done because that that's costly. Your sister brought that to me, mm-hmm. Jerry, yeah. and I said, Judge, get the line in. Mm-hmm. You don't have to tap in if your well's good, okay? But at least right. if it does go bad, in the future you got something near to supply your house. I agree. Um. So the last um, meeting, I had asked if um, I could have your permission to do uh, a series of talks at the library. The library and I worked it out. Um, they're April 18th, the 23rd, and the 30th, and we're going to talk about the budget and talk about the tax rate process and assessments. Um, John's team is going to tape it. We're just going to do an hour um, each night because I find more of an hour than talking about finances generally puts people to sleep. Um, So it will be at the Aaron Cutler Memorial Library. Very nice. And 
Then the next one, um, actually, Chair Larry had brought this question to me. Um, and then two days later, lo and behold, we got a communication from National <clears throat> Grid. Um, and so this is the herbicide, but um, Mr. Blackwell and I looked at it, and there's a very nice map here if our residents want to look. Mm -hmm. um, all of the areas in the right-of-way, this is right-of-way 1307, that they are um, treating, they have marked off clearly everything that needs to be avoided. So there's actually very little herbicide that is happening um, within Litchfield or close to any um, homes or drink or water wells or this is anything the, of that sort. This is the big one that runs by Continental and then across um, Conservation Land. Yes. Yes. So the concern would be, are there wells in that area that so, could be affected by this? I don't think there's no anything. I and mean, how much there's are they spraying? Because if it gets in, seeps in the ground, goes in the groundwater, it's going to do the same thing that PFOA is I think the only one that will be close would be um, the house, Sharon Young's house. That's the, the only one that's that close. Got moved. Craig Young's old one? Yeah. yeah. And so you'll notice all the areas in red – that are outlined in red, mm -hmm. they have already indicated all of those areas, which is most of the map. Mm -hmm. No herbicide can be used. So even though the, I think it was a newspaper advertisement that people were seeing about herbicide treatment in Litchfield, there's very little herbicide that's being laid. Just a small section, actually. That's right. It's all, yeah. Yep. So I think the map is is a good one if um, if there's any resident that that's watching and and can't get onto the portal and they want the map, they can feel free to stop by and we'll make them a copy. Okay. And the economic development committee meets Wednesday night. <laughs> and we are actively trying to uh, put together the survey results. There was a lot of people took the survey, yeah? Uh, 1,148. Perfect. And there's a lot of data there for us to sift through in the next two days. Um, Who's on that committee? Survey monkey should roll up. Hopefully some of it, right? Survey That's monkey? That's in Google Forms. Oh, okay. Well, we'll and figure we it out. Are, we're working through it. Get our analytics. Here we come. So you do uh, well, we will always take help. I'm not sure I'm doing it the way that you would like or that the way you I want. <laughs> <Not many questions, laughs> or the best way <laughs> or the fastest way. Um, but we are those, you're right, those multiple answers create all kinds of create, challenges. Yes, all kinds of challenges. I will um, say at the elections, uh, the table. As you walk in, yeah. was very all day. all day. We mm -hmm. gave them forms to sign, mm -hmm. and I gave them some that they can go online. Mm -hmm. Where to go online and a whole whole nine yards. It worked out nice. It was a good effort. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first question is is easy to um, calculate. Mm -hmm. and there's about there's a little over sixty seven percent of Litchfield favors economic development. Um, the interesting part was, you know, looking through the surveys, um, people that had indicated they strongly disagreed with economic development, but further down were 
good with more restaurants <coughs> and a winery and a brewery and and so um, that's what I mean by there's a lot of data there to sift through. Um, yep. But that's uh, Wednesday night, right, right around the corner. Oh, you replicated each one of the columns, didn't you? Yeah, is that the, not the best way? Okay. No, I don't. Um, Open to your way. Because <laughs> that way is keeping me here all night tomorrow night. <laughs> uh, give me tomorrow. I'll have it done for you. Oh, you're the best. Okay. And that's all I have. All right. Selectman reports. I don't think anybody's been to a meeting since our last meeting, have we? I, Did you have one? I heard a chat the other day. Okay. Yep. Uh, Chairman Colby resigned, uh, retained the seat. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl was vice chair. We discussed, um, she's been doing a really good job with the meetings, running, running them really well. We discussed the old home, the uh, morning home, yeah. Yeah, the dark old stable. She's going to, they want to talk with um, the Mr. Reggie. Reggie about possibly getting some more items out of there and storing them. Um, Yep. Some place. See if he's willing to donate more items, yep. which I'm sure he would be. It's wise. But it'll make sure that it's documented, and uh, it'll be part of the Heritage Commission. Very good. Very good. Um, School you... facilities. I can't meet at the time that they meet. Mm -hmm. They meet at three in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I have a two month old I'm dealing with my wife and everything else at the time. It takes two people to take care of a baby at our age. <laughs> and she's got you. And she <laughs> Okay. Ms. Queen. Uh, the Energy Committee, we have met since we had the uh, voting. Uh, I did not, uh, they held off on voting for chair and vice chair till the new mm -hmm. board member came on board. Um, NRPC, we do have a, another meeting coming up, a special meeting, of course, for the state. They have to do something with the MPO for a transportation project. So we'll have a special vote on that. That is on April 17th. That's all I have. Planning board I did not attend last time. Mm -hmm. And SIP should be starting soon, but I don't know when they usually gear that up. April 1st. Hmm? April 1st. April Fool's. Wow, that's in a week. <clears throat> um, oh. Good. That's good. Well, that's all I have. Yeah. Um, budget committee meets, I believe it's Thursday. Calendar. This week, so we'll get back in the saddle. And then for recreation, um, they had a meeting, and um, of course, we don't have a rep there. And so Judy Brennan sent the letter, so I'll read the letter. Um, it says, hello, select board. I'm sending you a recreation commission update as we do not have a BOS representative on the commission at this time. Um, the construction of the pavilion at Sawmill Park near the pickleball courts has been completed. We still need to construct an ADA compliant path to the pavilion. The spirit of Litchfield's Easter scavenger hunt is this Saturday, March 30th, 10 a.m. to noon, rain or shine. This will take place at four locations and clues will be released that morning at 9.55 a.m. on the Spirit of Litchfield Facebook page. <coughs> on April 14th, two seniors from Campbell High School will host a car show for the senior project. This is a donation-based event with all donations going to the Litchfield Veterans Group. There will not be any vendors or alcohol at this event. The Rec Commission is sponsoring this event and a CHS advisor is providing oversight and support to the students. We are having some plumbing problems at Talent Hall, urinal and men's rooms leaking, water's turned off yesterday, hoping to have it fixed. We will be working with the Conservation Commission to do spring cleanup at Parker Park. Happy spring. Judy Brennan, Secretary, Litchfield Rec Commission. Um, just a quick note that as we had um, Doug here earlier, but uh, the Veterans Park is scheduled to be dedicated to the town on May 4th. Um, so it's going to be really nice, really nice event, really nice gift to the town for the veterans because the town's done a lot for them. 
Other than that, I have nothing else. We do have something in non-public, correct? We cannot go into non-public. Oh, that's I right, failed. because it wasn't posted. Okay. Post so it. that's going to end this. Boy, I like mistakes like that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so, since we don't have non-public, we Get here. have any other business time. Mr. Flint, you've sat here all night. Are you just bored? <laughs> yeah, is now. I think he likes the idea it's quiet here. I, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never sat through an entire board of selectmen meeting and I was here, so I thought I'd just stay. Yeah. I you hope you run see. for selectmen someday, too. What's that? You should run, run for selectmen. You know, believe it or not, I was looking at that open, uh, yeah? open position that was just about so. threw my name in the hat. <laughs> uh, Decided it was. Okay. <laughs> it is. You got young kids still. Yeah. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah. You're welcome to sit here anytime you want. Okay. It's interesting to see the process and also to hear what's happening. Correct. Yeah. So, and Kim is our ace. In the whole area. And if we may, um, earlier in the evening, we yes. had the, um, uh, there's two elderly denials on the, uh, on the in the dockets. And yep. um, one of them was um, somebody that had um, exceeded the limit. It's a, it's a, it's a couple from what I understand. Um, but the second one, I don't want to mention the name, but no, please don't. Was someone that it was a husband and a wife together? They made the threshold. Husband passed away, or one of them passed away. Okay, now because they're widowed or widowed, they exceed a threshold. I can't see denying that based on that. I mean, now you're talking about a, a single income versus you know two people making the money, so. You know my pensions for the elderly, so I'm going to recommend that we deny the denial. Although I see two people have already signed it, but take my name off it. I didn't know the history. Um, Can it's I do by that? Statute. Statute. What? The statute. It's by statute. You can't. It's by statute. It's by state law. We don't set. We don't set the tax exemptions. That's right. State does. Well, the vote is. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> well, the, I mean, well, it was voted the vote it. the the voters do, but the voters vote to either have an elderly exemption by state law or not <laughs> have an elderly exemption by state law, and by such amounts, um, we can go back and and look at it and have the assessor yeah. um, weigh in. But okay, let's do that. Yes, let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna recommend that. You and then, I don't. I didn't know the name, sorry. Yep. And then Can I see that? That he had. Can I, I see that? I don't see anything on the other one that just says it's an elderly exemption and it's exceeded the, but we don't know the full story on it. So, so we're going to continue to table the we'll elderly table exemption, too, if that's okay with yeah, I'll have uh, the Yeah, uh, I'll have the assessor um, to get table? Yeah. look at both of those. Side. No, we have a few table more. Table. question too that exceeded the one. There are tables. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> We can't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're the board. We can do anything. <laughs> the citizens will just yeah. yell at us. But, right? That being said, we have no more business tonight. That will conduct our end our meeting of our business for tonight. I'll we'll make the motion to adjourn. We Second. have a motion for Mr. Gannon. Second. Second for Mr. Brunel. Any discussion? Yes, I need. All, right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those two. Those are the two that have been. We yeah. are out at 9.02 p.m. Mm -hmm. God. And You're making me tired watching. What are you doing the flowers? You've got to wreck me with them all. You've got more cars in your yard. So what? You've got to wreck me with them all. Yeah. So these two are on That's hold? That's your home. These oh. two are on hold, right? What's the weather? I'm going to make you come in. End of April. What's end of April? The flowers for our April. The flowers. My son, to apologize for standing around the house. <laughs> <laughs> my house. 
Yet he's in a house. Yes, we'll give your wife flowers well, after we're you know, years. It's not on TV. I can bring those home, and I look like a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> and off, then you yeah. take no. them back. He's got a bond for us. He's got a 30 <laughs> 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 he'll g- Yeah, you'll give them to Chrissy tonight. 